Hey there! Welcome to the course on Large Ruminant Production and Herd Health Management. Before we go in detail about the different management being practiced in this specific animal commodity, let us first take a look at the general picture of the large ruminant industry. This will give us an overview of the current status of the large ruminant production in the country and will at least help us appreciate the industry before we learn its basics and principles. At the end of this module, you are expected to be updated with the dairy cattle, beef cattle, and carabao industries. Enumerate the advantages and disadvantages of raising large ruminants and know the private and government agencies associated in the industry. Ruminants are different from most of the farm animals because of the presence of a four-compartment stomach. They can be divided into two, which was based obviously on their size the large and the small ruminants. Domesticated large ruminants farmed for production includes the cattle and the buffalo, while the small ruminants include the sheep and the goat. In this course, we will focus on the large ruminants. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the large ruminant industry in the Philippines has three components, the beef cattle, the dairy cattle, and the buffalo. Huge percent of the industry is under the backyard raising. About 85% of the cattle in the beef industry are comprised of backyard enterprises. The dairy industry is 65% smallholder and 35% commercial dairy. The buffalo or carabao industry is composed of 97% backyard farming and 3% commercial farming. As mentioned in the previous slide, the cattle industry is composed of two major animal commodities, the dairy cattle and the beef cattle. As a simple comparison between the two, the dairy cows are bred for their ability to produce large quantities of milk from which dairy products are made. The beef cattle, on the other hand, are raised, of course, for the production of its meat, the beef. The buffalo, on the other hand, is composed of the Philippine native carabao and a cross between the native and the imported purebred buffaloes. In general, the buffalo is used for milk, meat known as cara beef, and for draft. Note that 95% of the backyard raised water buffalo is used for draft purposes, assisting farmers in most of the farming activities. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, as of January 2021, there are a total of 2.63 million heads of cattle while there is 2.84 million heads of buffalo in the country. In general, most of the cattle being reared in the country belongs to the Bos Indicus or the tropical breeds. On the other hand, the type of buffalo present in the country is the swamp type and the famous representative is our very own Philippine native Garabao. However, due to the upgrading programs in the previous decades, there could be more likely crossbred buffalo than the carabao as of today. In the beef cattle industry, Central Visayas, Ilocos region, and Calabarzon recorded the highest number of beef cattle population. This accounts to around 33.4% of today's country's total beef cattle population. In terms of the production, here is a thematic map of the Philippines showing the volume of cattle production per province based on the PSA data last 2020. Among the provinces, Bukidnon was the highest producer of beef, followed by Pangasinan and Batangas. For the Carabao inventory, the Bicol region, Western Visayas, and Central Luzon had the highest recorded buffalo population. These regions accounted for 30% of the country's total carabao population. And based on the 2020 data of the PSA, Negros Occidental was the highest producer of carabao, followed by Leyte and Cagayan. The milk, which is the main product of the dairy industry, came from different dairy animals like cattle, water buffalo, and goats. The number of dairy animals increases through the years and among the three, the dairy cattle has the highest number of milk produced due to its higher number of milk production and higher number in terms of headcount. 
around 65% of the total milk produced is cow's milk. And according to the National Dairy Authority, the dairy cattle numbers increase in time due to the importation of new dairy breeds and an increase in the number of live births. There are four main types of dairy farms in the Philippines. The individual small hold producers who consume and sell locally what they produce, the small holder cooperatives who deliver their milk to a collection point for a transport to a processing plant, commercial farms which supply processors, and government farms which supply school and rural community feeding programs. The beef cattle industry is considered as one of the country's least developed commodity for the past several years. Beef cattle industry is predominantly of small hold or backyard type. The industry is divided based on the type of cattle raising being employed. This include the cow-calf operation, which means that the cow and the bulls are raised to produce calves, and the calves can be sold after weaning. Another is the breeder farm operation in which the main interest of the racer is to produce animals for breeding purposes. And lastly, the growing fattening operation were considered as the most popular type of cattle racing in the country and involves raising newly weaned calves or cowed mature heifers until they are ready for slaughter. This is the operation that directly provides the beef in the market. In the case of the buffalo, there are two main players in this industry, the Philippine native carabao and the upgraded imported buffalo. The milk of native carabao is relatively small and is only sold in selected communities primarily for household use and for locally produced milk products like pastillas and quesong puti. The increase in the population of crossbreeds provided farmers with added opportunities to increase the milk production. The buffalo industry is normally associated with cooperatives where milk is the main product. Per capita consumption is the yearly use of goods and services by each person derived by dividing the quantity of goods and services used by the total population. Or we can simply define it as the amount of product consumed by a person in a year. In terms of milk, the annual per capita milk consumption in the Philippines is estimated at 22 kilograms. This means that an average Filipino consumes around 22 liters of milk per year. This is low compared to our neighboring countries like Thailand with 26 kilograms and Malaysia with 52 kilograms. The data is much more low if compared with the Americans with around 287 kilograms of milk consumption per year. However, it is a sad reality that despite the presence of the dairy industry, the country produces less than 1% of its total annual dairy requirement and the remaining is being imported from powerhouse milking producing countries like New Zealand, USA, and Australia. Beef consumption on the other hand by an average Filipino is estimated at around 3.13 kilograms. This is assumed to compose of the beef from beef cattle and from the carabao. Due to the limited local beef production, the country is largely relying on imports. Most of the imported beef came from Brazil, Australia, India, and USA. As we have already an overview of the industries associated with the large ruminant, now let us identify some of the pros and cons of raising large ruminants as a commodity. One of the best advantages of the ruminants in general is that they can convert grass into meat and milk for human consumption. Because they utilize mostly grasses, there is a lesser cost in the feeds, and this can generate income for the ruminant tracers. As we learn, there is a high demand and limited supply, thus there is a ready market for the milk, meat, and other products. Ruminants can be used to utilize fallow lands and others that are not good for arable crop farming, thereby maximizing the use of the available land resources. This can be used as grazing area for the ruminants or can be used to plant forages for the ruminant consumption. Again, this maximizes the use of available land not suited for high-valued crops. Now let us identify the cons of raising large ruminants. 
As large ruminants are large animals, they need wide grazing area both for feeding and for pasture development. Voluminous amount of grass is needed to maintain their maintenance and productive energy. Since ruminants rely mostly on roughages over concentrate in the diet, roughage is a problem during hot or dry season. Ruminants also consume large amount of water and should be provided at all times. On the average, each animal needs more than 100 liters of water per day depending on the stage of their production. Also, the gestation period of ruminants is very long. In cattle, it's around 285 days, while 300 days in buffaloes. In order to address the problems and limitations in the large ruminant industry, there are government and public agencies that help local farmers in improving their production. The Department of Agriculture, through its attached agencies, plays an important role in improving the large ruminant production. As an agricultural livestock commodity, the Bureau of Animal Industry, in general, makes sure that the industry is productive and profitable under sustainable environment through sound policies, programs, research, and services on animal production, post-harvest, health, and welfare. Under the Bureau of Animal Industry is the National Beef Cattle and Research Development Center, which produce and distribute good quality frozen bull semen. They also conduct training and research on artificial insemination for the breeding of beef cattle. The National Dairy Authority or NDA, which is an attached agency of the Department of Agriculture, is mandated to ensure the accelerated development of the Philippine dairy industry through policy direction and program implementation. The NDA helps dairy farmers which include dairy cattle and buffalo raisers. The Philippine Carabao Center is mandated to conserve, propagate, and promote the carabao as a source of milk, meat, draft power, and hide to benefit the rural farmers. The Dairy Training and Research Institute, an academic institution under the University of the Philippines Los Baños, assists in the development of the local dairy industry through research, instruction, and extension. Our relationship with the large ruminants dates back in time when early people domesticated cattle for their milk and meat. The need to supply food in the increasing number of mouths to feed, people learned to develop technologies and management to enhance the productivity of cattle and buffalo. Historically, large ruminants play a role in the establishment of veterinary schools in the world. Claude Borgelat established the first School of Veterinary Medicine in Lyon, France, but it was centered around horses due to military, farming, and transportation needs. At those times, veterinary medicine was practiced mostly by farriers and farmers who were either self-taught or had moved through unregulated apprenticeship. Then, he realized that there is a need for vet schools, but he lacks something, money. A disease known as rinderpest or cattle plague is a highly contagious disease that had been known since humans initiated the domestication of livestock. It is the most important and impactful of all cattle diseases since it could be 100% fatal in some herds. It caused hundreds of millions of animal deaths that preceded famines in Africa, Asia, and Europe at that time. When Burgalat's veterinary school opened in 1761, the king only gave it a short-term grant, but rinderpest and the other epizootic diseases spreading through France gave Borgalat and his students the opportunity to prove their worth and show the value of standardized scientific training through the establishment of veterinary schools. And that ends our short discussion about the general picture of the large ruminant industry.